So we've had a few questions on how to answer one of the questions in our weekly checkup shown here. So I thought I'd uh, go through it for everyone to make sure people made, uh, could understand the problem. So as written, the question is talking about this reaction, the decomposition of mercury oxide to form mercury liquid and oxygen gas. And we can see the question's asking is we're told that under standard conditions, the reaction is not spontaneous. And then the question is asking for what temperature does the reaction become spontaneous? So when we think about this question, as soon as we see these words, spontaneous, not spontaneous here and spontaneous here, we should be thinking about um, delta G, right? So when we're talking about spontaneity, we should be thinking about a delta G. And then here is our big hint, temperature. So if you think about at what temperature does the reaction become spontaneous, that's our hint that the equation we're going to use is delta H equals, or delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And what we're going to be solving for in this equation is our temperature. So when we go about solving this problem, the first thing we're going to have to do is look up some values. And so what's shown in blue here these values here come from appendix G of your textbook. And what we have are the enthalpies of formation and the standard molar entropies of all of the um, reactants and products in our balanced chemical equation. And what we're going to do first is we're going to find delta H of reaction, and then we'll find delta S of reaction, and then finally we can come back to our delta G equation. So to find delta H of reaction and delta S, remember it's just products minus reaction reactants. So delta H of reaction is going to be the sum of our products minus the sum of our reactants. And in this case, we have delta H of reaction is going to be equal to, and we can see our products in this case are actually both zero because they're in their elemental state. And then we're going to subtract the negative 90 point, oop, and watch out here. I went a little too fast myself. Watch out for your coefficients. I'm going to erase that for a second. Um, because of this 2 here, we have to do 2 times negative 90.83. And so we're going to get our delta H of reaction being now a positive 181.66, put my units back in, kilojoules per mole. So now we have delta H. So we can do the same thing to find delta S of reaction. And that's again going to be our products minus our reactants, okay? And so we're just gonna go delta S of reaction is equal to the sum of our products. And in this case, we have to um, put all of our terms in. So the mercury is 75.9, but there's two of them. So we have two times 75.9 plus our O2, 205.2, minus our reactants. And again, there's the two coefficient there. So two times 70.29. And so if we put all that into our calculator, watching signs, order of operations, you should be able to get 216.42, and that's joules per mole. Kelvin. Now, that's the first part of the problem. Now we have to come back to our delta G equation here. And what we're told is, under standard conditions, we're going to get a positive delta G. And the question is asking, at what temperature does the reaction end up becoming a negative delta G? So if we put a 298 in for T, we should get a positive delta G. 
And the question is, when does t switch to become a negative value? And the way we're going to find this is we're going to set delta g equal to 0. Because at the point delta g equals 0 will be the point where we switch from being a non-spontaneous to a spontaneous reaction. And so delta g equals 0, which equals delta h minus t delta s. And so we can then rearrange our equation, and we can have um, delta h equals t delta s. And then t is equal to delta h over delta s. So now we can substitute in our delta h and our delta s terms, paying attention to our units. So I'm going to convert um, our units on one of these. It doesn't matter which one, but remember we have kilojoules and joules. So you can do this either way. I'm going to go to joules and say this is now 181,660 joules per mole. And that's divided by 216.42 joules per mole times Kelvin. And so what we get from that is a temperature of 839 Kelvin. Now, we have to think about what that number means. That's the temperature where we're changing from non-spontaneous to spontaneous. So temperatures above 839 Kelvin will be spontaneous. So I hope that helps um, solve the problem. If you have any questions, let me know.